Welcome to the MTD podcast. Uh, my name is Rowan Easter Robinson. Uh, I'm a kind of an apprentice engineer and a proud member of the MTD CNC team. Now today, uh, we've come to the Hexagon User Group event for EdgeCam uh, at the Seco Tech Centre. Here, it's kind of near Redditch. Where are we, Gary? Near in Ulster. Ulster, Ulster, Ulster. Sorry, yeah, near Redditch, but it's actually in Ulster. Yeah, Stratford upon Avon. Yeah, perfect. And we've got two. I've got two illustrious guests here. Um, one is actually a, a customer of Hexagon, Martin, who's uh, he's he's kind of helped out in the event here. Has been part of the Q and A session as in the event as a as a, a happy customer of, of EdgeCam, and also some of the we're going to talk about some of the functionality and how it helps him make some really fascinating components. We're going to discuss that in a little bit um, yet. Yeah, but I've got first of all. One of the first guests, Gareth Henwood uh, from Hexagon. You, you've been on the podcast before, haven't you, Gareth? Yes, I think we did one earlier on in the year. We did, yeah. Yeah, it was a while back. We talked yeah. about a lot Emobility, of stuff. Emobility, wasn't it? Emobility, yes, it was fascinating. We talked about, about, about the, the, the viability of uh, electric cars and, and how Hexagon does a lot of um, simulation around, around kind of design. And there were some smart people on the podcast as well. I've got to say, I did not count myself amongst the smartest in that, in that room, definitely. What did I hear the guys? Yeah, yeah I I never normally do either anyway, but uh, uh, especially not in here either. Um, but yeah, Gareth, could you give us a little bit of an introduction as to who you are, please, for those who don't know? Yeah, so my name's Gareth Hemward. I've been with Hexagon since 2017. I'm one of the area sales managers for metal cutting cam products for the production so software division. I cover the southwest of the UK uh, for the cam side, and I also cover half of the mainland UK for Javelin, which is our MRP product. Brilliant. So um, you, you cover a lot of the country. You've been doing this for a long time as well. Uh, you definitely know a lot about uh, a lot about um, not just software, but about inspection as well. We've seen you with the with the roaming arms and the scanners all built in uh, for reverse engineering stuff. You've got some really interesting customers um, that we saw as well at the the, the Silverstone uh, Technology Cluster as well. That event was really good. Um, the Hexagon events always seem to be really interesting. Have some really great turnouts from interesting customers. And that leads me on to Martin. Chevina, oh, did, I, did I say that right? Yeah, Martin? that's about close. Perfect. I don't know how to spell it still, but I'm, I can just about uh, pronounce it. Don't worry, not many people can get it right. Now. Thank you. I'll, yeah, I'll get myself at the top of something at least, hopefully. Uh, and you're the managing director, is that right, of Factory 33? Yes, I am managing director of um, Young Strong Going Company. Um, we've been dealing for about seven years now within uh, the motorsport industry, medical uh, we've been producing a lot of high quality components for uh, those industries and also been designing a lot of parts for motocross bikes. More about um, the business, Factory 33. How did it start? Why did it start? And, and how young really is it? Um, so business is, is going for over seven years. Um, we decided to start an engine company because it was a niche for the components, for quality components delivered on time. A lot of um, customers and suppliers always were uh, complaining that the parts never get delivered on time. And we thought it can't be that difficult. And as it turns out, uh, it's not really that difficult. Uh, you know, under promise, over deliver. Uh, that's what we try to do within our company. Uh, you know, we've got um, uh, four, four different machines um, that includes full five axis simultaneous. We've got one of the best uh, software packages, which that brings obviously um, EdgeCam Pro Hexagon. It's in our arsenal uh, and that's how we're tackling our jobs, you know. Brilliant. I, lo I love the, uh, it, it can't be that hard to, to please customers and it really can't be if, you're, if you if you run a good be. business well, yeah. then, then you just, good customers what you focus on. You just have customers. to um, promise the realistic dates and deliver. And just pay attention to details and everything's um, everything's going to work um, in your favor. Um, and what do um, it's probably hard to find kind of the commonalities between a medical parts require a lot of precision. I guess so do the kind of the motorsport parts yep. as well. But do you find that there's there's a big difference in motorsport that there's kind of lots of one offs, especially for Formula One and Formula E. Medical is a lot of repeatability. How do you manage um, all these different kinds of components going through the shop floor at once? So what, we, what we're doing, we obviously uh, do a lot of repeatable stuff for the medical, but then when it comes to the one-offs, we, um, we're quite lucky that we've chosen the right software to do so. Uh, we can produce the parts very quickly, uh, have the uh, robust G-code output from um, softwares like um, Edgecom, we, I've been user of Edcom of over 15, 15 plus years. Um, when we've opened the business, we've uh, purchased the first license of Edcom within two months of running the business. We just realized that although we are small and new business, just starting, we have to add a decent software to, um, to the two R 
uh, pr production. It just makes the um, life a lot easier when you can produce all the blends, all the radiuses, and the simulation in Edgecam is um, is very good. Uh, we can compare directly to the um, to the models and uh, the software constantly evolving and improving. I mean, you've got NC Simuls right now. We can verify the G-code actually on uh, machine twin. So we know whatever goes on our machine, on a three axis, five axis, on a four axis mill or on a lathe, we actually 100% sure that nothing's going to crash and the power's going to come out right. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating that um, I mean, you need a CAM system to make those complex components of motorsport yes. and medicine. You can't program these by hand anymore, really, can you? No, because you've got so many different blends, undercuts, uh, full five axis, simultaneous moves on the machine. Um, you will not be able to cut 100% of the part uh, of any conversational system, uh, which is there on the system, uh, on, on the market. You need that good package uh, behind it, and it needs to be really easy to use fairly quick to generate uh, tool paths and, and we've run some large files and, and the generations of the tool paths for, tool paths for me is, is really good. Brilliant. And, and Gareth, I, I don't know the history of you and Martin, but obviously you know him, You're, he's one of your customers. How long have you been working together? So again, as I say, I started in 2017. So again, I was covering the, the whole South. I had a third of the country then. So again, I probably met Martin in a year, just a year after he'd started the company. Yeah, he would, have been, would have been there about something yeah, about that. Yeah, but actually, he's been a edge cam user probably before maybe before you were, yeah, yeah fifty plus years. Yeah. Edge cam. Yeah. yeah, I've been a user in my previous life, so I used edge cam late nineties. Oh, okay. So he's yeah. he's still you still bib him to the post in veteran status. Veteran status. There we go. Yeah. So um, so you've been working for Martin probably I've been working with Martin since um kind of a year after they started the company. Um, and how did you see the business grow and their use of edge cam change? Yeah, so again, gradually, gradually as the, their business, Bill Martin business expanded, he invested in more machinery. So then we set them in the, uh, a new post processor. Then we went for the five axis. Yes, five axis. New post processor, five axis module, also five axis training. So we get it. And what was moving to five axis like? Um, it was seamless. We had no problems. The post we had supplied, uh, because for those who knows the five-axis machining, they knows that post is absolutely everything. You can have the best software in the universe, but if the post is not really absolutely 100% bulletproof, um, you will not be um, feeling safe running those five-axis parts, those undercuts, you know. Um, you just need an absolute, um, absolute uh, post for that. And um, surprise, surprise, um, the post is really good. We had almost no modifications to what has been supplied on the day one to us. No modifications. Almost no modifications. From day one. Almost. Day one. It's pretty good. We, 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 we've asked for simple changes uh, with end positioning moves, but that was it. The, we, we didn't have to modify any approaches on a five axis simultaneous. It's, it's, it's bulletproof. A bulletproof uh, five axis post, which is really nice for that peace of mind when you're running a five axis machine, especially yeah, exactly. lights out and there's no one to watch it. And even if you're holding on the feed hold yeah. uh, on the on the feed override, though you still can't stop it really in time because these machines are so fast now. Confidence in proving um, the first part is is high at our place because um, it, we, we haven't dropped a beat just yet with the post. Yeah, yeah, and that's something I find fascinating about. The difficulty of running kind of a subcontract shop is if you have the 2,000 off, you have to prove it at once. You run it 1,999 yeah, exactly. times. If you run one offs, you have to prove it out yeah. every if, single time. If you run ones and twos offs, um, you really almost want to get to the point where you're so confident that you can program, load the machine, press the button, and either go and program one of the parts or just go home. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to be able to. You don't want to have to watch it because that is wasted time. Exactly, and we at this point uh, within our company that we have the processes ironed out. Uh, the post is um, is good, uh, software is good, and we at this point where we can just press that button and turn around. Mm. And how much do you? Um, <clears throat> How much do you use NC Simul for that, as well as the the the, the standard simulation in Edge Cam? So with NC Simuls, we're probably using about fifty percent of the time. Is that for more complicated jobs? Uh, for jobs? more complicated jobs, or for the jobs that I know that I will press this button and and leave through the front doors of the company. <laughs> so then I will run it through the NC Simuls. 
although I haven't found anything wrong just yet with what the um, software outputted. So I'm getting even more confident now not to even run the Insta symbols, which um, I probably should, but it's just, just a level getting... of confidence. You have to find this right balance within the confidence and what you... Yeah, no one, no one would ever accuse you of being overconfident, yeah. before, Martin. <laughs> No way, no way. But and, and I love Gareth's phrases. You want to crash pixels, not parts, right? That's, yeah. I've heard that a couple of times, and it's sunk in finally. Um, especially when Martin, these are your machines. This is yeah, exactly. your capital exactly. on the line. Yeah. This is your machinery. So you have the 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 the, the highest incentive to keep this machinery running as, as well exactly. as possible. And if you can walk out the front door and knowing that you're there, say 100, 200, 300,000 pound machine yeah. tool is going to be absolutely fine. Then <clears throat> that shows a real confidence in the software that you're using. Um, let's let's zoom out a little bit and talk a bit about, about more about the event today, which I found fascinating. There's a lot of the customers we talked to. There's a guy called Peter Moyo who'd been using EdgeCam again for something like 15 years. There was there's, you've been using it since the 90s, which is unimaginable. Sorry, Gareth. <laughs> no, it's not complete. Like we're still using tapes at that point. We're still using magnetic tape. Or, just just, just, just mean that was a long time before that. No, yeah, computers fitting in a room. That was the 60s. That was a long time. I was ago. a wireframe back then. Was it wireframe? So would you see the toolpath? So which the lines of the toolpath? Yeah, it still has a simulation now, huh? but it's just it's not changed that much. Has it? Yeah, it's just going solid models. Yeah, it's just a little bit quicker. Yeah. <laughs> or it is. Yeah. Um, so, so there's one thing I found quite fascinating is the the customers that show the kind of the power users have been using this software for a very long time. So I assume they kind of they know the ins and the outs of it, but they still show up to these events. They still come to learn something because, as you say, EdgeChem is evolving. So, how is EdgeChem evolving? I mean, what have we seen today? Um, so again, yeah, uh, my colleague, colleague Mike, he did. Uh, What's new in the latest release of EdgeCam? Tips and tricks. He used yeah, that phrase quite a lot. And he always puts the tips and trick in. Yeah. Which again, from this great feedback we've always had from the user group events, everybody loves the tips and tricks part of the event because it's yeah, something that they they see quickly. It might have saved them three, four clicks or they didn't know about. It's all about time. As you say, you have that machine. You have to keep that spindle running. If you're not... If the spinner's not running, you're not making money. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Um, anything we can do to help that, everybody takes that away. And again, we've we've had various improvements and new features in the milling and the turning today. And again, so generally somebody will always take something away that didn't know that, or there's a there's a quicker way of doing that. So it's yeah. all about uh, we focus a lot on performance as well. Mm -hmm. uh, generation or the regeneration of yeah, improvements as well. waveform that's been around since 20, 2011 in the milling um, 2015 and you're still improving it still improving the algorithms the, the, how fast they run how, how yeah, it's getting better and better and you know the customers and users of EdgeCam are benefiting from it yeah. you've definitely got some software tool, engineers toolpath tool calculation uh, with every release is improving it's just quicker yeah, 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 totally. So you've got some software engineers that are squirreling away all the time working on EdgeCam. Uh, and I guess they need to they need to spend some time talking to the, the customers as well, which is why it's nice for for you to bring customers together so they can you can you can talk about what problems you have what they're having and 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 what they'd like to see. Yeah, and we always we always like that face to face side of it. But as a supported customer as well, you have access to our customer portal. But we encourage we encourage customers to say what what would you like us to put in the next release of the software? So we don't always guarantee it will go there, but the more people say, yeah, I could really do with this functionality or something like that, a lot of the development of the product is driven by customer needs. Mm. Yeah, totally. And I, I, let's move on to um, what you talked about in the Q&A, Mark. Oh, yes. which was, it was an interesting Q&A. We had a lot more A's than Q's, unfortunately, but it was absolutely fine. Um, and and Martin, you stood up and you started describing this this feature in, in EdgeCam that yes. you use quite a lot. Yeah, um, so we've um, we've recently started using Tombstone Manager uh, because we've always got multiple parts on our machines, um, but there were certain limitations. A, we have been chopping and cutting the codes and changing your G54s for G55s and um, literally copy and paste the programs to make it longer, to run on few vices or, or using the matrix mode on the free access mills. Um, but what pushed us towards the Tombstone Manager was the fact that uh, on a five-axis machines, once you load up the pyram pyramid um, and you're doing some five-axis moves, uh, you can't just simply um, tell the machine to start at A and C position 
uh, because it will not exactly follow the correct coordinates. Um, you have to start from uh, B0 or A0, C0. And uh, the answer to this, to resolve this problem was to um, have specific uh, piece of kit like um, Tombstone Manager. So what that allows us now is we can run any type of parts on any type of fixture we want, either that's a tombstone or a pyramid or free axis uh, milling table. Uh, we can run multiple parts with just programming one part. We can run uh, multiple parts um, of different parts. AI, we can have, um, let's say, six vices on a tombstone, and we can run six different parts, which, as you know, if you are a small machine shop like ours, um, and you run um, limited batches, sometimes take consists just of one of two parts uh, per batch to the parts you've made before. If you make like a development part for yeah, Formula E, there's yeah. one of those, isn't there? Yeah, but you can, you can load six different parts on a tombstone, and you can machine them all at the same time because you just literally pick and choose which parts you want to machine and which, on which, in which voice they're sitting on the tombstone, which, which makes it um, extremely efficient for me because I don't have to worry with eight different datums, eight different programs. I only get one program once I've um, created. Um, everything happens automatically for me. So it's a huge improvement, huge saves, savings on time uh, of my time, which I can do other things, quoting customers or, or, or doing something else on other machine. Yeah, totally. It's about being able to do as much in parallel as possible. Yeah. It also saves you, I guess, the probing time of those eight datums as well. Probing totally, each of those up. That's 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 a great thing about it. If we if we're on a five axis, all of our fixtures, tombstones, or pyramids have just one uh, point, specific point to probe. So we're using just one datum. We're only probing a circle and a Z plane, and um, off we go. Rather than before, I would manage to do eight parts, but I would have eight different datums, and I would have probe eight different datums as well. Which obviously that can lend itself to a human error as well. What's interesting, I guess some people might consider, might push back on the potential accuracy of this approach. I mean, what happens um, if you, they would say maybe if when, you, when you load the blocks in, you have to probe up those blocks exactly because maybe the, the, the model will be slightly different to the way the vices grip the blocks. How does that work? How does that? Well, it's, so if you're going to load the, the block incorrectly in a vice, I mean, obviously you're going to crash, but yeah. the, I think the trick is to be sensible at the time of programming. Allow yourself, there's a feature in Edgecom even when you can actually allow extra stock. You don't have to change your physically stock. You can tell it the first roughing cycle to um, basically add extra one or two or three or five millimeters, whatever you wish, tell it, look, start a little bit further away, maybe we've loaded incorrectly, etc. cetera. But uh, it, it's, this, this particular thing is not an issue for us. Not an issue. I guess as long as you have good work holding yeah. and the models are correct. Yeah, you obviously have to. Um, so in our case, we model all, our, all of our pyramids. We've used standard models for the um, for the devices we use. Uh, and I've, once everything is done correctly, um, it runs seamlessly at our place. Seamlessly. Okay, I love it. And that's and that's um, it's generally for parts that have already been programmed and proven out. Yes. Okay, and and I, you, I remember you talking about to mentioning to it kind of sparked some interest in the crowd yeah. at the time of the Q and A's, and you were saying it's 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 about because you've already proven the program and the yes. part. If you've got a contract, some some I don't know, ten off, two off of this, two off of that, two two off of the other yep. parts that you've already done and come in. Yeah, you can. How does that work? Do you have? Do you literally drag and drop them into your micro lock style or matrix style? So we would normally, in our case, uh, we the most uh, we run the tombstone manager on our five axis. So our, our tombstone will have um, eight vices. So it's two per side, and if the parts uh, we've done before, we can just open the template of a tombstone. And then we'll just um, um, inserting the parts on pre on the faces which got like a CPL uh, mating faces to the voices, and that's all it that needs to be done. Then the software will just regenerate the toolpath, um, so you can have eight different parts on one tombstone. And then you export one program. Yeah. And set one, one day to one day. run the program, you've got yeah. eight good parts. But there's another good benefit about it. If you've got two or three different jobs running at the same time, um, normally you would um, you would tend to machine thirty of one and then let's say 30 of the other, and then 30 of another part, okay? So in that situation, we can also run um, all these parts simultaneously. So we can run three different components on the same machine at the same time. So they can be coming off and going on a different machine uh, to finish, and everybody's happy because we've got 
uh, we don't have to queue the jobs. We can run them simultaneously. Yeah, it customers, was customers, 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 who's last yeah, is not yeah, complaining because yeah, customer A gets yeah. part. They all go first. at the same time, okay? Um, so we can we can do it that. That's they should be very diplomatic. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we found that that approach as well uh, working for us quite well. Yeah, yeah, completely. Okay, so um, that's Tombstone Manager. Tombstone is, Manager. Um, I guess that's like it's an adult. I guess you you start when you're starting a, a subcontract business or a machine shop. You start with oh bloody how do we make this part? Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Then once you get one level up, you how do we make ten of these parts? Yeah. And then you how do we make ten of these every week? And then eventually. The process approved, the cutting tools approved. You're like, oh, I'll just drag these in, drag this, and we'll get these done then. And you'll, you'll, you move to higher and higher levels. Everybody keeps saying about automation these days, okay? I would say Tombstone Manager is the very first step to automation, okay? Because you, you, it gives you that flexibility to run multiple parts, same parts. The parts you had programmed, it's an absolute breeze just to get them on that, on that fixture and just have them made. Yeah, absolutely. So the the entry level, you don't before you buy a robot, before you buy a, I guess you have a bar feeder normally on a lathe anyway. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, when you're milling, um, extending those cycle times is only really possible if you put in low, yeah. presenting more parts to the spindle. I mean, our five axis machine's got a two hundred fifty millimeter platter table. Okay, uh, most people look at these and think, oh, it's a small table. Okay, mm. we can swing four hundred mil. We've got eight vices sometimes on that machine. Okay. When you look at that machine, we just so you're not table. using the vertical space in that. Yeah. In that, you're just looking at the the, yeah. the size of the yeah. CX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what 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 people what people normally think about it? Oh, it's a small five axis machine. Not really. It gives you great access because the plat is small, and you can build up high, tip it ninety degree, and your tombstone sits on it. You've got eight vices, you know, and you can access multiple sides still. Multiple, so the, you can still access components. multiple sides, you know. You treat it basically that five axis like um like, like a horizontal, a, like a horizontal like, almost yeah, yeah. as such. Wow. Because when people uh, think about tombstones, um, they think horizontal. Yeah, because only, that's why they, yeah. they don't see only stuck that, in that eh? domain. And only I've got a horizontal machine, I yeah. can buy a tombstone. That tombstone manager, we're actually using on a free axis mill because it's uh, it's nothing else. You know, he's just a reinvented of the kind of on a, on, You mentioned a matrix. Yeah, like, we're just, you're doing, you're just putting the um, uh, eight voices, let's say, mm -hmm. and we'll just pick and choose whichever parts we want to put on them. You're almost, it's almost like you're bringing... VMC milling into the nesting style of a laser yeah, cutter. Exactly. Where you say, I've got exactly. Yeah, that yeah, here, yeah, in there, fit down there. You've got which it. is super efficient. And you're you're talking about the yield per square square meter, yeah. I guess. You if you think about it, you know, at at, at four thirty, half an hour before you go, you've got eight devices on the machine, and then you only have an order for two parts. Okay, you still. Um, you know, you would press the button on those. You've got another device. You can quite easily put different parts for different customers. And, you know, rather two hours of cycle time, you've got a machine running till 2 a.m. in the morning, for example. Absolutely. And it's fascinating that software seems to be the backbone of, 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 of this, this, this good, good practice in machine shop management and production scheduling. Um, how, how do you think... Uh, customers and people who are listening to this and are thinking, well, you know, how can this software make my machine shop run better? I need, surely I need, I'm struggling with operators. I'm struggling, cutting tools are breaking. Operators don't know how to, how to solve these issues. They don't know how to run machines. I'm struggling like this. How can, how can a piece of software, surely that's the last thing I should be looking at? Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, people, in my opinion, are creatures of, uh, people are creatures of habit, okay? Once they develop a technique, they will stick with it, either it's rightfully or, or wrongfully, okay? Uh, just because we've been able to run eight devices simultaneously on a free access machine, it doesn't mean we've been doing this in an effective way, okay? Tombstone Manager uh, proved me that um, as an easier way of running eight parts at a time, you can just multiply them, you know, and then when you even move to more advanced parts, when you actually got multiple sides machining like on a five axis machine with the pyramids, where without Tombstone Manager, you would not be even able sometimes to follow certain angles uh, because how the C axis when it rotates and the pyramid is... Uh, obviously at 20 or 30 degrees, you would kind of, the angles would run away off of you. Um, then without this, you wouldn't be able to, to cut these. We can cut full five axis simultaneous parts on a pyramid, uh, three at a time, thanks to Thompson Manager. Beforehand, I would, to do this, even within the Edgecam software, without the Thompson Manager, I would need to actually build this um, um, pyramid. The whole assembly. The whole assembly. And then machine and then every single it. part separately yeah. within one program, okay? So I would be effectively programming three parts. I mean, I would be rotating a little bit around it, but I would need to physically program three parts. Whereas now I can run three different full five-axis simultaneous parts 
on a pyramid. Yeah, completely disconnects yeah. the CAM programming yeah. of a single yeah. part to the yeah. arranging of yeah. these parts in a machine. Tool. Exactly. And if I need to make any changes, I can go to the original PPF, which is extensions for the Eskom programs, and I can change that directly into the um, uh, child part. And then if I'll open the original program for the whole pyramid assembly, it will ask me if, it's, if I want to accept the changes. So it automatically updates and generates a new program. I mean, how good is that? I love it. How good is that? So we've, got, we've gone deep into the weeds of Tombstone Manager and how it can help. Hopefully, a lot of subcontractors take, take their first steps into what is kind of automation, extending your cycle times, working lights out, and which most people think they cannot do, but actually they can do today with uh, investment in software and some, some decent yeah, work holding. Definitely. Maybe a five-axis machine as well. Maybe <laughs> we'll see. Um, brilliant. Okay, so that, that's, it, it's, it's, it's great to hear from a customer exactly technically why, the, why, why software helps so much. Uh, and I think these case studies are so important to, to, to learn the applications of the software because you can see screenshots, you can watch a tutorial, um, Gareth, you'd be super quick in EdgeCam, look how quick, quick I can program this part, but but from a customer, it, it's great to see it actually in the wild as well. Um, I think it's been it's been a, a really good event today. We've learned a lot from from Martin about Factory 33, uh, how you guys stay competitive, how you please customers. I think it's, it's, it's fairly obvious now how much effort and thought you put into the making, making good components uh, consistently. Um, and there'll be obviously, I think there should be some more of these user groups happening as well. I think talking behind the scenes, they, they, I think some people have been saying that these user groups are really useful to bring uh, people together, find out more about the software because it's, it's nice. It's, it's easy to sit with a piece of software and that you know well and just go through the same workflows that you always do. And you don't know if you don't have my key to say, here's a little mm -hmm. tip. This might save you five minutes every day. If you save five minutes every day after, after, after a, I don't know, a full year's work, that's a lot of time you saved. So it's really important to. Uh, keep learning more. I know it's hard. I know you don't want to. I know you don't want to lose a day's production. But Martin, what would you say to those who don't want to lose a day's production? Well, you just have to <laughs> stand back and reevaluate re how you approach things. Just, yeah. just, just, just look to make your life easier. Yeah, look to make your life easier and then it'll pay dividends back, definitely. Also, some pretty good muffins as well. I think we're going to be tucking into one of these is cupcakes, muffins, same thing? Cup, cupcakes. Cupcakes, yeah. yeah. We can dig into one of these delicious hexing cupcakes straight after this podcast as well. Um, so thank you for listening. That's been the MTD uh, CNC podcast. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thanks very much, Ryan. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.